Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today we're gonna sit down with Final Cut. I just got done filming a YouTube video and I'm gonna show you step by step what my process is for importing this footage and getting my entire project set up in Final Cut. So let's get started by capturing this footage in Finder. Switch over to Finder here and you can see the Canon card comes up. In this folder, I'm gonna to go to my main online hard drive. That's my Pegasus 2 R8 with 24 terabytes of storage, 21 terabytes because it is RAID 5. I actually have a shortcut here to my stuff, so I'm going to go here, and then I'm gonna make a new folder for this project, number 135, yes, that's right, episode 135. And this episode is all about my Upbeat video, which Upbeat, by the way, is a music service that has a free account, as well as a paid account. They do music and sound effects, kind of like Soundstripe, Epidemic Sound, and all that. They're newer to the scene, but really have some great music. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, so feel free to check it out. So uh, Upbeat, uh, let's just call it Upbeat. Okay, so now I need to take my template, and that's gonna be on my Pegasus R8. So we'll go to Midland Pictures, and then I have a template here. In my YouTube template, I'm gonna copy all of these folders into this folder. All right, so this is my library template. I'm gonna to link to a video above and below where I go more in depth into my template and why you should be using folder templates and Final Cut Pro library templates if you're a content creator. So I've got the documents folder here, project files, which is where my Final Cut uh, library sits. And I'm gonna rename this to 135 and call it Upbeat. And then this is where I'm going to capture my footage. So I've got my media folder, film, and then this is all A-roll since it's a scripted talking head video. I'm gonna navigate back to the Canon memory card. I'll go ahead and take all of this stuff and copy it in here. So we've got 41.7 gigs. While that's copying, I'm gonna go back to Final Cut Pro and just double check some preferences here. I've got copy to library storage location. I don't want that set. I was actually working with my Final Cut library template and updating it, and there were a few things like sound effects and graphics that I did want to store inside the library, but I'm gonna go ahead now and check over to leave files in place, and I'm gonna make sure my background rendering is turned off, as well as create optimized media for multicams. To learn a little bit more about this, I'll link to a video above and below about how to keep your hard drive free space as much as possible and your Final Cut Pro libraries as small as possible when working with Final Cut Pro. All right, so we've got everything copied over. That's all looking good. All right, so now I need to open my Final Cut library template, get all that up and running. So here we go. And you can see I'm already ready to go because I have a project event, a footage event, an audio event, stills, graphics, screen recordings, and content. And just real quick, if these kind of tutorials, these in-depth, deep dive, sit down sessions with me are something that you really enjoy, do me a favor and click the like button down below. And if you're not subscribed and you love Final Cut Pro content and filmmaking content, click that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. I'd love to have you as a part of this channel in the community that we're all growing. So join us, and if you do decide to subscribe, welcome to the channel. Now this import process is gonna be pretty easy because for this video, it's just a single camera angle with me talking to the camera. So it's just going to be one video clip. It's not gonna be a bunch of screen recordings or B-roll and other stuff that I have for some of my more complex videos. So we're gonna to navigate to footage here. And this footage goes under A-roll and uh, I have a smart collection here so that it automatically goes into this Matthew smart collection because I'm gonna change the file name. So now that I've imported my C300 Mark II footage, I'm going to rename that footage a custom file name. Now I never do this for paid client work, especially when I'm working with a colorist. You always wanna keep your original camera files to their original naming structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of this file to 135 underscore upbeat underscore a roll then matthew then c300 mark 2 and then 001 now normally if i have multiple clips of a roll or b roll i'll use an app called a better finder rename to rename those those files in bulk but because this is just one file i don't need to bother i can just name it rename it in Finder, no problem. So now that we have the footage event selected in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna drag and drop my footage into the import window. And there we go. Let's go ahead and get this set to fit. And you can see this looks a little crazy because Final Cut 
because it's a C300 Mark II video and it's been shot in Canon Log 3, it automatically applies the corresponding LUT to it. I'm going to go ahead and remove that here in a moment, but I wanted you to see what I've got here. This Matthew Smart Collection automatically has my camera angle in it because I labeled it Matthew and the Smart Collection is set up to say all text that includes Matthew gets filtered to that Smart Collection. Now with this, I didn't have any other audio sources. I boomed my microphone straight into the C300 Mark II so I don't have to mess with anything there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this LUT. I'm going to switch this metadata view to settings and then go ahead and take off the Canon Log 3. And then I'm going to go to the audio pane and set up my audio. With this audio, I have the boom mic set to go into channel one, but the camera automatically duplicates that audio to channel two, so you basically have a dual mono uh, audio so that there's sound in the left channel and the right channel. And I don't have to mess with anything in Final Cut to do that. So I'm gonna switch this from four mono to two stereo and then deselect dialogue two. And that basically means that channels one and two are condensed down here into this Dialog 1 sub roll, and my audio is good to go now. So let's go ahead and change the view. I'm just gonna squish this down so it's a one thumbnail. And then I'm also going to increase its size for better visibility. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to make my multi-cam. We'll go ahead and right click and choose new multi-cam clip, and then I'm gonna call this Matthew Multi. And right here I have the Video settings for 4K, not the way I want it. I recorded this in 4K DCI, which is 4096 by 2160, but I output all my videos to a two to one aspect ratio of 4096 to 2048. And that is not, uh, and that is one of the presets here, 4096 by 2048. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then this also is recorded in a hard 24 frames per second. So we'll make sure that that's set as well. This is going into the footage folder and I'm gonna hit okay. And you'll see it pop up here in the Matthew Smart Collection because it's labeled Matthew Multi. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click and go into the Multicam and rename this angle wide. And then I'm going to add an angle and I'm gonna duplicate this by holding option and clicking and dragging down to the second angle. And this is gonna be my close angle because I'm gonna use jump cuts to keep the video engaging and dynamic by going from the wide to the close. If you've watched my videos, you see that I do this all the time. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add my preset effect for the color grade that I wanna to apply to this clip. So I'm gonna to go to the effects browser eventually and search for C300. And you can see I've got C300 Mark II teleprompter and I'm gonna drag that on and then I'm gonna drag it onto this one as well. And that gives me my base grade for my clips. I think it's a little too contrasty. So uh, I'm gonna double check my waveform here. And let's drag this over. And we'll go to Luma. And we can see that my skin tones are right here and I might just lift the mids a little bit on this. Just to make it a little less contrasty. Well, let's go ahead and remove these effects just so that we have it exactly the same between the two clips. So I'm gonna delete those. Then I'm gonna take this one and copy and paste. Okay. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply my dialog fix. The boom mic sounds pretty good just right out of camera, but I want to add a compressor and a limiter, and I have a preset here that I made that has a compressor and a limiter. I'm just gonna add it to the wide angle because I'm always going to use that audio. And we'll double check that everything got applied. Yep, I got a compressor and a limiter on there. If we could see the waveform, we'd be able to take a look at how that impacted the clip, but the waveforms are taking forever to generate in Final Cut ever since M1 chips came out, especially the M1 Pro and M1 Max, and I'm on my 2013 Mac Pro, so it's kind of an issue <laughs> that it's not working. The waveforms will eventually generate, but it takes almost two hours for them 
to not only generate, but to generate so that when I zoom in and out and also blade my clips, the audio waveforms re regenerate quickly so I can keep editing off of the waveforms because that's how I primarily edit by looking at the waveforms. And the next thing I want to do is deal with these black bars. Again, we're 4096 by 2160 and this is 4096 by 2048. So it's, it's going to letterbox things on the side because the spatial conform setting is set to fit. Now I can set this to fill and then we're good there, but then I need this angle to match. So what I'm going to do is go back out to my project, go to project, and then untitled. I'm going to rename this 135 upbeat rough edit v1. So now I need to make sure that my angles are looking good. So not only uh, my wide angle, uh, but the close up that I'm going to make as a sort of a fake second angle by cropping in on the wide angle. So I'm going to drop this down and then I'm going to set this to fill and then I'm going to duplicate this clip. And I'm going to zoom in on it quite a bit. I'm going to drop the opacity because what I like to do is I like to match my eyes so that my eyes are on the same plane. There we go. Change the opacity back. And then we'll copy and then go into the multicam. And then I'm going to paste those adjustments. So position and scale, spatial conform. It's fine. Even though the eyes are matching, I feel like it's a little too much of a haircut on that angle. That feels better to me. Yeah. And I'm going to put this down in and I'm going to change my settings here on the timeline because I'm editing off the waveform. I just want to see the waveform and I want the clip to be as big as possible. I also want this to fit. Actually, let's do 50% so I have a little bit of room outside the border. And now what I would do, I've got the waveform here. Now what I would do is I would start editing this as soon as I can. Let's double check that we have audio. Do have audio? Yep. See with the waveform when we really get started. That's when I clapped. So left bracket, we get that. Did a couple takes. <sighs> it's too expensive. And we are cranked on audio there. <sighs> it's too expensive. I don't have time. I don't have a good camera. Microphones are expensive. I don't have any lights. I don't know. Okay. Are we gonna be linked? Alright. So this is where I would start. Now I've got the waveform here, so I'd be going through and uh, working on cutting all this down. You know, see how I zoom out and it like the waveform takes forever to redraw. This is really a problem on the Mac Pro. In my editing workflow on 10.6.1, it takes forever for the waveform to regenerate, so I'm constantly sitting here waiting. And I really prefer to do my A-roll edit sitting at my computer at my desk in a comfortable chair. The uh, M1 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro has no problems with the audio waveforms at all, but it is a little bit painful to sit at the computer at a you know the kitchen table or wherever working on an edit uh, doing the a-roll edit so what i have been doing and this is again something else that slows creators down and having to deal with this stuff in final cut is letting this just sit open for a while and go through whatever process it has to go through of really generating those waveforms and making sure they're all rock solid and in place so i can zoom in zoom out and every time i blade and bracket my A-roll, I'm still able to see the waveform not take, what, 90 seconds, two minutes almost to uh, regenerate. Now, something else I'll show you about my template is in my project here, 
I also have some core elements that I consistently use across all my YouTube videos. So I've got this arrow that I use all the time instead of making it from scratch every time or opening an older project and copying and pasting it into my current project. I just have it here hanging out in a timeline ready to go when I need it. Same thing here with this Twitter animation. I can just copy and paste this from this core elements timeline into my other timeline. This yellow arrow I've started to use a little bit. And then I have this call to action from the MTuber 3 plugins from Motion VFX. Uh, those are up here in the titles section uh, under MTuber 3, but I find that it's just easier to have it in a timeline. It's stretched out to the length that I like. So that's all just ready to go. And then of course I have my outro graphic, the music and the sound effect uh, ready to go as well. So these are important elements that occur in almost every single YouTube video I make. So just having them on a timeline makes it so much easier when I'm working on an edit and getting ready to do that kind of polish pass where I add all that stuff in. I can just copy and paste from this timeline to my other timeline as I need to. So the most important thing I want you to take away from this project was seeing how fast it was for me to go from importing the footage to really being ready to edit. Using a finder template of folders as well as a Final Cut library that has an organizational template built in is a really great way to make sure that the time that you have between filming your video and when you really start to edit your video is as little time as possible. Now I'm gonna include a link down in the description to a Dropbox folder that has my Finder template as well as my Final Cut Pro library template. It's gonna be a little bit different than this one because I don't want my core elements and stuff like that in there. Uh, so you'll see some subtle differences, but the basic uh, gist of it is going to be there. Feel free to use that Finder template as well as that Final Cut Pro library template to organize your footage, all your media, graphics, assets, whatever it is you create, even your scripts, uh, and then be able to uh, organize it all in Final Cut in a corresponding fashion. That should help you get to creating much faster after you're done recording one of your videos. And let me know if you have any feedback on how maybe to tweak the organization that I have with my folders and my Final Cut library template. So that's my start to finish process for importing my footage and getting my Final Cut Pro library up and running so I can get editing my videos as quickly as possible. If you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. And until the next one, I'll see y'all soon.